Welcome back to the Jordan Maxwell Show. Remember, you can find us on jordanmaxwellshow.com. Check us out and make sure you like us on Facebook. We are the Jordan Maxwell Show, or you can follow us on Twitter at jmaxwellshow for any news or announcements from Jordan. You can also subscribe to the Jordan Maxwell Show on iTunes. And remember, it's free. There are lots of ways to find us, so please tell all of your friends about us. To be able to do a quality show, we want people to listen. So thank you for spreading the word. We left off talking about everything being in groups of 13. You are going to explain why. So, Jordan, where does this all originate? People don't know that the United States of America can be traced back to India. That's where we have come from. The United States of America has come from India. So the United States of America as a republic can be traced back to India, to the Hindu. All of Judaism and almost all of Christianity and uh, virtually all of Islam, all three of those major religions, can be traced back to the Hindus in India. I mean, the, the Jewish religion especially is just filled with, uh, with Hindu and Buddhistic uh, symbols. I mean, the six-pointed star, the Star of David, no, that was originally comes from the Hindus in India and also was picked up by the Buddhists. And later on, it becomes known as the Star of David in the 1890s. I mean, it was only a couple hundred years ago, uh, if that, that the star, that the six-pointed star became known as the Star of David. Before 1890s, there was no Star of David. No one ever heard, Jews never heard of any Star of David. There was a six-pointed hexagram, yeah, but it was not called the Star of David point of fact there was no king david king david never existed i got news for you muhammad never existed there was no such a man named muhammad as far as i'm concerned no such man ever existed named muhammad but it's like everybody in spain's name is jesus mexico so many young men are called jesus or jesus or uh, jesus yeah. and jesus right but what happens if we find out there was no Jesus? Well, it's too late. You already got 46 billion people, and they're all named Jesus. <laughs> and why? It's because everybody else is doing it. So that's what my name is. My name is Jesus or Jesus. And then you find out, well, there was no Jesus. never existed. I mean, I remember talking to rabbis many years ago. My dear friend, a high-ranking rabbi. This was back in 1965, 66, and 67 who was a good friend of mine. And I used to send him all kinds of documents and research materials back in 67. And he would send me all kinds of interesting research on Jewish religion and the Christian religion. So we were trading a lot of interesting stuff many, many years ago. I asked him one time, I said, Rabbi, tell me the truth. You're not talking to a fool. Tell me the truth. Was there a Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob or King Solomon, or King David, or any of these uh, people in the Bible, did they really exist? And he said, look, it, it's a religion. Everybody's got a religion. Catholics got a religion. A Protestant got religion. Islamic people got a religion. For Christ's sake, give me a break. I got to have a religion, too. I mean, the Jews got to have something, too. And I said, well, that doesn't answer my question. Were these people real in history? And he said, well, look, at first of all, there was no King David and King Solomon. All of these people are just stories in the Bible. That's why the Bible's called the greatest story ever told. It is the greatest story. It's just a story. Now, when you understand how this stuff works, you begin to see that the story goes back to India. Brahman, Vishnu, Shiva. Or in Egypt is Osiris, Isis, Horus. Or in Christianity, it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or in Judaism, it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's always a triune Godhead. And so he said, the rabbi said to me, was there a Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva? I said, no, those are just metaphor names for gods. He said, well, that's what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is. There was no Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob. It goes back to India. It goes back to the Hindus because the highest ranking priests that represented God in India were called Brahmins. Brahman. And so you put an A in from it because Abram. Abram. And that's what the Bible says. Abraham's name was Abram before he became known as Abraham. And the Brahmins in India had a very special river that they would bathe in, and it was called the Waters of God. That was supposedly where everyone was baptized and all the Brahmin priests would, would bathe. And that river was called Saraswazi, the Saraswazi River. And so the, you put an A in front of Brahman, it becomes Abraman or Abraham and Sarah. 
No, it's the Saraswazi River for the Brahmin priest. Judaism goes back to the Hindu. Christianity goes back to Hindu. Islam is a whole different subject. Well, I find <clears throat> Islam fascinating with Mecca and their pilgrimage. And, and yeah. actually, you know, if you trace Mecca back to centuries. Yeah, all the religion that we call Islam was already in existence. Mm -hmm. Fully already developed and in existence way before any Muhammad would ever, ever live. The whole Islamic religion was already in place. But it was a worship of the planet Saturn at the time. It was in involving the moon worship. It was involving the planet Venus. This is why in all Islamic countries today, their flags and all the halotry of the, of the official colors of the Islamic countries of today is green. Look it up in any reference book on occultism, and it will tell you that the color green is an Islamic color. That's why all their flags and national coats of arms are all green. Green was the color associated with Venus. <clears throat> That's why when you see an Islamic mosque, you will see a crescent and a star. Mm -hmm. The star represents Venus, the morning star. And the crescent is the morning star when it first rises. Because when it first rises in the morning, even astronomers will tell you, you will never see Venus as a full circle. It always is a crescent. The crescent has been used for the moon worship, but that's a little bit later. But originally, the crescent was the symbol for Venus. All I'm saying is that Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are ancient pagan religions. And there's only a handful of people in the world that know anything about this. And it's not good business to uh, tell the people the truth. I've always wondered how important is it to tell people the truth, really? Analyze that. If someone's dying... How important is it for the doctor to tell them that they're dying? If your wife's cheating on you and I know it, how important is that to tell a man that his wife's cheating on it? How important is it to tell people the truth? Because remember, generally speaking, people will finance and support what they want to hear. They will not finance or support what they don't want to hear. Well, the truth hurts. Well, of course. They're not going to give you money and support you so you can tell them the real truth. Yeah. And so if you love country western music, you're not going to pay a lot of money to go to a rap concert. Well, if so, you go back to the even the uh, priest, I think it was they were ordered by the Vatican. They'd give them the tr for the translation. They would, uh, one monastery would get half the truth and the other one would get the other half the truth. And these two monasteries would never get together to know the whole truth. <laughs> well, yeah, divide and conquer. Mm-hmm. Keep everybody stupid. This way, the guys on top, they, they control everything, and nobody knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's like going to court. Why do you go to court? You play basketball on a court. You play well, tennis on a well, court. Look at a court hearing. It says the event starts at a certain time. It's sort of right <clears> on the right, wall. Event. It's a big, nothing but a big game. It's like show. There was a book by Dr. Hans Hyman. It came out in 1938 from Rutgers University, wrote a book called Plans for Permanent Peace. Go back over that and look for it and go on the web and see if you can find it called Plans for Permanent Peace. But Dr. Hans, H-A-N-S, Hans Hyman. And in his book, he said basically that a world war is going to start next year. And it's going to start in Germany. I'm trying to remember, but he was basically saying the war was going to end in about 1945. After the war is over, he had four fold-out charts in the book, if you can find the book. And in it, he explained how the whole world is going to be set up in a whole new monetary, political, super government of the world. And it's going to be starting in 1945. Those four different maps that open out from the book are very, very interesting, showing how the banks are going to all be connected around the world, the savings and loans, insurance companies. It's all been planned for a long time. Well, you look at the Marshall Plan, which rebuilt Europe and Japan <laughs> after the war destroyed right. it. I mean, that's still in effect, in a sense, and with the central banks uh, keeping uh, those economies up or down, depending on... Uh, yeah, they I want mean, to make things happen. I mean, look at Japan right now. They're in another recession. You look at Europe, they're 
on the break of you know, and the problem. reason why is because all the money around the world is being manipulated by the bankers mm -hmm. well it's always been controlled <laughs> by a handful or so of families of course absolutely yeah. so matter of fact if the federal reserve and the internal revenue are home office people don't know this you know where the home office for the federal reserve and the internal revenue are it's puerto rico <clears throat> puerto rico mm -hmm. get out of here yeah, yeah puerto rico i didn't know that yep. yeah and why the Federal Reserve and the Internal Revenue is the in-house money for the America. You're talking about the money of America, the Federal Reserve, Internal Revenue. It's in Puerto Rico. Why? Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> well, who were the pirates of the Caribbean? Their symbol, their, the pirate's flag was a black flag with a skull and crossbones. It was called a Jolly Roger. And what is the Jolly Roger flag, the skull and crossbones on a black square? The black square represents the planet uh, Saturn. The skull and bones was an order, a secret society called the Knights Templars, and they were the pirates of the Caribbean. Well, that goes back and you look at the Swiss cross and you look at the policy. We go back to Harvard and Yale and the skull and bones at uh, Absolutely. Yale. Absolutely, skull and bones at yeah. Yale. Well, then you have the two-sided political system where Harvard is liberal and, uh, and then you look at Yale for more policy. Yeah. Uh, all of this is very, very interesting stuff that people don't know any of this and they're never going to be told any of it. Well, it's not even <clears throat> in the textbooks. No, not, it's not going to be It's not going, never to, be going to be either. Kind of funny, I thought of you, Jordan, the other day. I was watching television. It's a family auction house. And this one kid brought in his uh, father's Knights Templar um, oh, yeah. sword yeah. and his, uh, his, his <clears throat> regalia. Re yeah, regalia, I guess yeah. you'd call it. And uh, <clears throat> the, the, the auctioneer is going, wait, I, I thought this didn't exist. I thought uh, the 1300s, this was, this was gone. And the kid said, well, I don't know anything about that. This is my dad's. And He's in the Knights Templar, and he's you know he died, and I'm I just want to see if I can get some money for it. <laughs> well, doesn't doesn't a lot of that stem to uh, central intelligence too? Oh, with yeah. uh, you know protecting people think that it's an agency about spies. Really, it's controlling the uh, or monitoring, not controlling, monitoring the the flow of money around the globe. Absolutely, yeah. CIA was originally called the OSS. Mm -hmm. In the Second World War, <clears throat> the Vatican came up with the idea because the Vatican is the best secret um, investigating organization in the world. Also, far, one of the far, also one of the wealthiest. Yeah, of course. But they're but they're the best uh, spy agency is the word I was looking for. The best spy agency on the earth is the Vatican. Uh, they're far far superior to MI5 and MI6 in London far superior to NSA here in America, NSA and CIA. Um, why? As well, it's because they've been around for 1,600 years doing what they do. So they're pretty good at it. But you just came into the world you know, 200 years ago. No, they've been doing it for 1,600 years. Mm -hmm. So just understand that for 1,600 years, the Vatican has dominated Europe. Actually, for 2,300 years, Rome has dominated Europe, starting with the Caesars of Rome and with the fall of the Roman Empire in 425, uh, with the official fall of the Roman Empire came uh, the Vatican, ultimately became the, the power of Europe, Rome. So Rome hasn't gone anywhere. It just morphed into the Vatican. It's still Caesar. He's still God. And everyone crawls on their knees. All to, leads to Rome. All, all roads lead all to Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Yeah. And so once you understand that uh, the Roman Empire has dominated Europe for 2,300 years, first of all under Caesars, and then the last 1,600 years under the Vatican, what I'm saying is that for 2,300 years, the Rome has dominated Europe, period. And Europe has dominated the earth. All the earth has been dominated by the Portuguese, the Spanish, the British, the French, the Germans. The whole world has been dominated by Europe, and Europe has been dominated by Rome. So the bottom line is all roads lead to Rome. All the crap going on today with all the drug cartels in South America and the meddling cartels and the Nazis 
in Brazil and boys of Brazil and the Nazis in uh, Argentina and Paraguay and Uruguay, all of these Nazi SS Gestapo countries like Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, and Peru. But keep in mind, all of these countries were, were very Catholic. They're very Roman. As a matter of fact, Paraguay and Uruguay was founded by the Jesuits, and they run all the rest. So the bottom line on all of this is, if you want to know what's going on on the earth today, you better look at Rome. I hear all this stuff about the Jews doing this and the Jews are doing that. When in point of fact, no, it's not the Jews as much as it is the guys who've been in power for 2,300 years. Rome. And the Roman system is based on an ancient Phoenician Canaanite system. And there's a, just a very big story about history that people are not aware of. But well, the Venetian Canaanites were really the architects. That's right. The, they the were the architects of our, of our whole political system and our yeah. judicial system and all of our money systems. Uh, it's an incredible story about the betrayal of the human race by that ancient people called the Phoenician Canaanites. Well, that goes back to the biblical Cain and Abel. That's right. Right there. That's right. And... Uh, when you go back to um, the, the history of Egypt, you know, we're told in the Bible, we, we're given the story about Moses. Moses, first of all, uh, there probably was no Moses. There was a line of pharaohs called Thutmoses. Thutmoses the first, second, and third. Thutmoses. Thut is, gives us our word today in English, thought. Thought comes from the, from the idea of thut. And Moses means the son of in Egyptian language. So in the Egyptian language, Moses merely means the son of. And Thut gives us our word thought. Therefore, Pharaoh Thut Moses was said to be the thought of God. God thought up Thut Moses. Uh, and so Moses was most likely never existed. But the religion based around Moses, Thutmoses, was moon worship. Because from Egypt and, of course, and from the Sinai on the other side of the sea, in the Sinai is a large set of mountains in the, in the uh, middle of the Sinai, are huge mountains. And so the people on the west, which would be in Egypt and the west part of the Sinai, every night they would see the moon come up. Mm -hmm. And the, obviously, it, the moon comes up from behind the mountains. So obviously, anyone is, can figure that out. The moon lives in the mountain. So, and so the moon comes up every night from the mountain. And so the moon's name, the old uh, Arabic name for the moon, the moon god, because he was obviously a god, and he was sleeping during the day, but he comes out at night. Uh, his name was Sin, S-I-N, Sin. Look it up in the dictionary, S-I-N. That was the name of the moon god in Arabia. And Sin lived in a mountain, obviously, because every night we see him coming up from the mountain. Well, a mountain in the old ancient Arabic tongue was Ai. So Ai was a mountain, and Sin was the god of the mountain, the god who lived in the mountain, the moon god. So you put them together, he became known as the old man of the mountain, or the moon god who lives in the mountain, Sin Ai. So today we call it Sinai. No, it's not Sinai, it's Sin Ai, the moon god of the mountain. So we talk about how holy in Jerusalem and oh, Mount Sinai. There's nothing holy in Jerusalem. The only thing holy in Israel are the stories that come out of it. They're full of holes. The whole <laughs> thing is, 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 is sex worship, drugs, rock and roll, money, politics, religion, there's no truth in any of it. Go back and read the history books. Go back and read about sin. And, and he would rise up in the nighttime. And that's why even today, the Hebrews still have their holy days after sundown. Why are holy days after sundown? Because that's when the moon comes out. So the significance of the holidays with uh, Passover, where the sun passes over the earth, it's all... You know, it goes back to sun worship. And, of course. Uh, well, the, you know, what I found interesting is having some time spent with uh, Kabbalah oh, and, yeah. and yeah. its significance with astrology, numerology, and the Torah. Of course. Let me, let, me, let me give you an example of how this stuff works. 
If you go back to the very earliest times in mankind's recorded history, we're talking about 6,005 to 7,000 years ago. On the plains of Shinar, what we call today uh, Iraq, Iran, that was one of the oldest civilizations on the earth. The idea was that on the first day of winter, uh, try and follow this logic, on the first day of summer, the sun is as high in the northern hemisphere as it's going to get, and it's right over us. So therefore, he's really hot. God's sun is really hot now. And so the constellation that begins summer is Leo, the lion, Leo. And so therefore the sun, when it's in the constellation of Leo, begins summer. The dominant symbol during summer was Leo the lion. That's why Disney makes movies about the Lion King. Of course the sun, God's son, the light of the world, our risen savior is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Mm -hmm. Why? Because all kings, rulers, potentates, princes, police department, fire department, every college, university, Every institution on the face of the earth, the badges will always have a sun on it. Mm -hmm. God's son is king of kings and lord of lords. Every state symbol. Every state symbol. Everybody has a sun. Why? Because it's the only thing that causes life on the earth, period. So, follow the logic now. On the first day of summer, the sun is as high in the northern hemisphere as it's going to go. And so the Lion King is really hot. Three months later, or 90 degrees later, if you have 30 days in a month, three months later is 90, 90 days or 90 degrees. He is now halfway down. Mm -hmm. He was really hot at one time. Now he's not that hot. We call that fall because he was hot. Now he's falling. He's losing power. So we call that fall. Well, when you start to fall... You, you go all the way down as you're falling all the way down south until you hit December 21st. And uh, now you've hit bottom. Now you're dead as far as we're concerned. You're gone. You left, the, you left the world. You're down there. So now he's not only fallen, but now he's dead. That's the first day of winter. Well, when the sun goes south and it hits December 21st, what's interesting is that on the December 22nd, the 23rd and the 24th, all three days, the sun does not go any further south, but it does not come back to the northern hemisphere either. So on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, it just sits on that same degree. Winter solstice. The winter solstice for three days. So the ancient Egyptians said that the sun doesn't move for three days. Well, anything has been moving every day and stops for three days, he was dead. So therefore, God's son was dead in his tomb for three days. Then on December 25th, the sun moves one degree northward, which means it wasn't doing anything for three days. It was dead. But now it's been born again. It's come back to life. So now it's going to start its annual journey back, to, back the to the northern hemisphere. So 90 days later, it's springing back to life. Mm -hmm. So we call it spring. I don't care what you call it, the sun's coming back to us. And so when it comes back, the main constellation of the zodiac, which represents spring, was Virgo, the virgin. So therefore, God's son is born of a virgin, Virgo, the constellation of Virgo and the constellation of the zodiac. So he has springing back to life. He's come back. So the ancient Egyptians said, when you die... You passed on, and we say the same thing today. When someone passed, when someone dies, we say, "Well, grandmother passed last night, or she passed over, or passed away, or passed on." Passed means they've left, they've gone. Therefore, the sun, which was really hot in summer, ninety degrees later, he fell. Ninety days later, he's falling. Now he falls all the way down to winter. Now he's dead. He's not even falling. He's just totally dead. Then he's reborn on December twenty fifth, Christmas. He's reborn on December twenty fifth. Now ninety days later, he comes back over the equator, and as it passes over the equator, there's a big celebration because everybody knows he's coming back. He said he would return. He promised he would return. Well, he did. And now we can plant and live and harvest and we can have a good time now because God's son, the lay of the world, is coming back. So as it passes over the equator, 
we say God's son was dead and went there, but he has passed over the equator. So the Egyptians had a very big celebration. They called it the Passover. Mm -hmm. And so today the Hebrews and the Jews still celebrate the Passover in the first week of spring. The Christians, of course, would not have anything to do with that. That's, that's Jewish religion, the Passover, when the sun's passing over the equator. On the third day, he rose again and fulfilled the scriptures. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so now it's coming back to us. So he's springing back, back to, to life. life. But the Christians cannot have anything to do with the Jewish religion. That's called the Passover. So in the same week that the Passover is going on, the Christians have something called the resurrection mm -hmm. of God's son. I don't care what you call it, the resurrection, he's come back to life, or he's passing over, coming back to the northern hemisphere. I don't care what you call it, Passover, resurrection, Easter, it doesn't matter, whatever you want to call it. But the bottom line is, both the Jews and the Christians are worshiping the Son who's crossing over, who's passing over. He is resurrected, he's coming back to life for the northern hemisphere. It's all sun worship, it all has to do with astrology and sun worship. There's nothing holy in Jerusalem. This is not the chosen people of God. It's just a religion for God. It's like, give me a break. It's like Hinduism, Buddhism, Shintoism, Catholicism, Protestantism, Judaism. It's just a religion for God's sake. It's just a story. I mean, come on, get on. I always say, why don't you go out and get a job and buy a book and do something and educate yourself as to how this damn stuff works. There's nothing holy in Rome. My God, there's been well, there's more people more murdered. More sacrifices in uh, Rome than they were on sacrifices. the planet. Sacrifices, yeah. Now look at the Colosseum. Look at yeah, classic example. And then, and then when you get into Judaism and all the Hindu symbolism in Judaism of Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, the Holy River of Sarah, Brahma, Sarah, or Abraham and Sarah, and like Rabbi uh, Rabbi told me, uh, you know, there's nothing. All religions in the world are based on a triangle, pyramid, the three points of a triangle, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Osiris, Isis, Horus, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, um, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, always a triune God, always three. That's why you have to have Christianity, Judaism, Islam, a triune Godhead. All of this stuff is mystical stuff that the ancient peoples knew. And that, the, uh, and that the masters who learned all of this stuff thousands of years ago has put the world together today. And we live in a world today that is crawling with occult symbols, words, terms, numbers, numerology. But it's over the head of 99% of the people on the face of the earth have no idea what's going on. None. Nobody ever tells them anything. Oh, no clue. Yep. Always has been. And as I said, the bad part about it is that people will not support the truth. And when you start, look at, if you understand, and I could go on for days on this subject of the solar cult of the ancient Egyptians. Once you understand that Jesus did not exist as a man, there was no such a man as Jesus. It's a story. But once you understand the story as a metaphor, it's a symbolic story. And Jesus is a key symbol in the metaphor. Jesus represents, he said, I am the truth and the light. No man comes to the Father unless he comes through me. What is it that is the truth of all truth in the light if it isn't the sun? You can do all kinds of things in the dark at night, nobody sees you. But anything is done in the sun at 12 noon, everybody, everybody sees, sees you. you. That's the truth and the light. We saw you. So therefore, God's Son, the light of the world, who incidentally had 12 apostles, of course the Son has 12 followers, you know. 12 signs of the zodiac. The 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year. Wow. I know you could go on about this for hours, but let's break here. Yeah, well, I'd like to talk about this subject in detail sometime soon. Don't forget, if you want to support the show at no cost to you, do all of your shopping on Amazon.com. Make sure to click through our homepage on the Amazon link. See you next time.